Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division with Various Wind here for the Valley of the Dead tournament in Golf Clash the game video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and before we start make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications you can get the ultimate tournament guides and or the exclusive tour text guides on Patreon link to Patreon and our guides the best guides on the market is directly in the description down below Follow the info box on the right hand side for the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions, but you don't have to follow it if you don't want to. But there is always a plan behind it. So, let's go to hole number one. Hole number one, and we're gonna use the right hand side here. This is because this is the best possible chance for us to make an eagle. So I'm gonna add six top spin and two left spin, and I'm gonna focus on having my ball guy line pointing towards the top right bunker. I'm starting at max distance as well. And as you can see that I'm adjusting maximum distance plus 10. I'm not pushing to max by any means. So I'm going to center the ball and hit perfect. You will notice in the info box to the right that I do suggest to play with an apocalypse. What I mean with that is that I would like you to play with a club that do have six bars of topspin. Preferably it will be an apocalypse level three plus, but an extra mile level eight would work, but also a higher level Thor's hammer. Second shot, we're gonna play with a thorn. And the reason I would like to play with a thorn is because we, um, we often get this one upgraded a little bit quicker than the Hornet. A click of backspin, which is approximately half a bar with the ball guideline to the hole. Uh, with the wind angle like this, you have to zoom in a lot or the trees will be a problem. 20% elevation through distance number is what we're looking for. Adjustment is done. And then the only thing that we shall do here now is to hit perfect. A perfect ball with this approach will be a good chance, but hole number one here is finicky due to bouncing on that uphill slope. You can see how high the second bounce will be, which means that that bounce will be affected a little bit more by the wind than normal second bounces. So we need to have that in mind, but good start with an eagle in hole number one. Hole number two, there is a rough bump. There is definitely a different type of bounce over, but here for the playthrough, we're gonna take a look at a safe shot where we're gonna have a good chance for a drop. I'm gonna leave the rough bump outside here because the rough bump will be somewhat dependent on what type of wind angle you're gonna have. So you can see here now that I'm adding spin and focusing on having the ball guideline to point left of pin. Adjustment here is gonna be maximum distance with a 15% uh, adjustment power three ball settings. And even though it, it, you can see that we're aiming close to the rough line, you will notice that we're still going to have room to hit a great left and obviously a great right. So, and this spot here that we are bouncing on and rolling up towards the pin with is actually very nice and kind of a sticky spot on this, uh, on this hole, which has wrestled into many, many hole in ones with these type of shots. So max plus 15, power five, kingmaker to reduce the wind. You don't have to play with a kingmaker if you don't want to, because we're gonna be somewhere around mid club, and then a ball with less power will of, uh, of course be possible, but good chance on hole two. On hole number three, we're gonna play into one of the absolute biggest funnels that we do have in the game. And you would notice that when we do play the second shot. But first, 5.8 bars of top spin and three right spin. And we don't want to use more than 5.8 because now we're getting ourselves into a very good distance with that amount of top spin. Max plus 10 is the adjustment. And then we shall try to obviously hit perfect without using any curl. Perfect ball, which is nice. And we're getting this ball to be on the right side of the fairway. And that is something that is very important to get yourself more to the right, which will open up and make the funnel easier to play into on the second shot. The more left you are, the tougher it will be to find it. So instead of going with the first bounce on the fairway, we're gonna go with the first bounce into the rough. Look at this funnel here. And a funnel means that we're gonna 
once we have added spin, you can see the ball guideline. You can see me moving left and right, and you can see that the ball guideline is basically not moving, which means that we are giving ourselves a lot of room for, uh, for error. You can see back and forth, back and forth, and the ball guideline is not moving. So in this case, we know that you know we're gonna have a very good chance to get this ball to drop and i believe even great balls with this type of setup will be a possibility to drop no elevation and then true club distance so depending on you know if you are in min or max or mid club you're gonna use that for this approach you can see it rolls down it looks like it's gonna stop short but it's downhill downhill all the way and we get the ball right at pin for beautiful albatross here and you're gonna hear me say that in in this playthrough but if you're gonna have anything to do with the top in the tournament this is a shot that you need to drop hole number four has always been a tough par three to manage to consistently drop but the way to play this hole is by using the rough bump and when playing from second tee in Tailwind, we're going to play with uh, Goliath because Goliath is the only long iron that gives us the top spin and also a decent ball guideline. Three left spin and whatever top spin that gets the ball guideline to be, in this instance, two, uh, two green squares short of hole with Goliath level seven. Have in mind, Goliath level, and, um, Goliath level nine has a better ball guideline. And also Goliath level 8 has a slight better ball guideline as well. So we need to have that in mind when we set up our shot. Max plus 20 power 3 ball settings. And I'm using a Kingmaker to reduce the wind as much as possible here. Obviously a bad adjustment and a great left may put the bunker in play. But if you adjust it properly and hit great left you will still be safe from that bunker. And obviously great right will be, will be safe as well. Where a perfect will be a chance to get a drop. Again hole number 4 is a tough one but it's definitely a makeable one since we found out this rough bump. Hole number five, and here we're gonna play straight down the fairway, this to be able to utilize the yardage and notes, which is very, very good to have when we play a short par four like this one. So we're gonna add as much top spin that we possible can. And here with the extra mile, I'm using six bars. If I would be having a different amount of uh, top spin available, meaning seven bars or more, then I would use all that I can. In headwind, I would strongly advise you to play with a Titan ball or with a Kingmaker to prevent yourself from having to use any overpower. Uh, unfortunately, here on the video, I have to use a little bit of overpower because I'm only using a power two ball. Maximum distance, no elevation on the drive, and we're looking to be somewhere around the 360 to 370 yards. Second shot, we're gonna play with uh, our favorite short iron. It's either gonna be the Hornet, the Thorn, or the Falcon, depending on if you have the Falcon level 7 or better. Um, otherwise, lower level Falcon is not really gonna be anything that we would like to have. Ball guideline to hold. I like to play this shot without any spin, if possible and i would i would i will be using 10 percent elevation and with true distance number i will say true distance number if you don't have any yardage notes to follow which we don't have here so here it's important that you move to max club and then to minimum distance club to try to get yourself a feel of what type of club distance you are in perfect ball and with a perfect ball i do believe this is going to be a very good chance and i would almost say that for those of you that are fighting in the top of your division this one is an absolute must to drop hole number six this is regardless of what wind direction we have a super boring par five in my opinion and i'm gonna explain more about that after we've gone through the shot so here i'm starting with uh, 5.8 bars of top spin and two right spin ball guideline to be centered down the fairway very important adjustment is going to be max plus 10 power 5 and you can see that i do play with an apocalypse i would recommend to play with the driver that gives you the most power and top spin together after that has been done we're gonna go full blast overpower with no uh, push-up so we're gonna have a slow needle which is gonna make it easier for us to hit perfect 
even though I do hit a great uh, there, it is still going to be safe. But again, it is going to be easier in general to hit perfect with that type of play. Now for the second shot, we're going to be prepared with our Cataclysm. And here uh, now it becomes, you know, the real tricky thing here. Here we could have played with a sniper and backspin towards the pin, but I like to play this rough bump as it kind of ensures me to be always around the pin in some way. And it also, in my opinion, the best chance to make an albatross. Due to the great left on the drive, it puts me to aim pretty close to the bunker, but with a perfect or a great right, we will have lots of room for the bunker on the left there. 20% elevation, even though we're not sorry we are not in max distance of our club obviously we shall not use max number but it's more common to be in max distance than it is to be in mid distance in this hole it's only when we do have a tailwind when getting into around mid distance is gonna be the most frequent thing to do but 20 percent elevation very important that you do use that with true club distance and again not really close to an albatross but we're getting down there and getting ourselves an easy eagle For hole number seven, you will see two types of play here. One where we're gonna play for a rough bump and one where we're gonna play on the fairway before the rough and bounce up towards the pin. So we're gonna start with the rough bump and now we're gonna look for the top of the yellow ring to be by, this, uh, by the rough line with the right side of the red ring by the sand trap line. Once finding that spot, we're gonna start at spin. So three and a half bar top spin and half a bar of side spin to the right. The adjustment is going to be simple because we're going to play a one to one, which is medium distance, power three ball settings, 10% elevation. So one to one means that if you have six miles per hour in wind, you're going to play six rings. Adjustment is done, center the ball and hit perfect. And then you will see yourself bounce into that rough, take that slope, like basically like a hockey rink or like ice rink or something like that and get the ball right at pin in this instance, at least. Uh, for a lovely hole in one but for those that don't feel comfortable with the rough bump let's take a look at another option where we do bounce before the rough and still have a decent chance for an hole in one so for the bounce over option you will see a shot from our opponent and here it is very important to have in mind that everything goes fairly quick so this is more or less only to demonstrate a way of playing that is not a rough bump on this hole so our opponent is playing with one right spin and then 2.2 bars of backspin. You can see that the ball guideline is to the hole with a slight gap from the top white ring to the rough line. Pretty strong 12 of 1 and the adjustment goes quick that I estimated to be max plus a 10. But again, have in mind that the only reason I'm showing this one is to show that you can play on that fairway to have a completely um a bulletproof way of getting that ball to the green for a safe birdie but i do strongly believe that the rough bump will by far be the best chance of making a um, uh, hole in one here on this hole but again if you don't feel comfortable you have this option here which you can play as well with uh, a free to play ball Hole number eight, I will give you two versions here because depending on what wind we're gonna have and what clubs we have, we can play with Tailwind in two different ways. But we're gonna start here by playing on the right hand side and when I do have Tailwind and don't want to blast to green, then I'm using the big topper. Even if I would be having the big topper in a level such as level three or level four, I would still use the big topper because I can still push up after I made my adjustment. Max plus 10 is uh, the club distance and elevation to use. Max top spin is what we're using as spin. And then you could see in the video, I pushed up to max because the idea here is to get the ball to roll as far down the fairway possible without obviously rolling into the rough. We maybe could have started a little bit more to the left based on where we ended up there on the fairway. Now, second shot, we're gonna play with almost a straight tailwind to pin. I would say it's very important here to look for the spot that kind of makes the ball guideline kind of jump massively to the right, which is a very, it's a glitchy spot. I don't know why that becomes, because it looks flat, but look for that spot, try to position yourself left of that spot so you avoid having the first bounce there, and that would definitely cause you to miss the shot. 
So I'm using a little bit of left uh, right spin and no backspin whatsoever. Ball guideline slightly short of hole. And the reason I wanted to have it short of hole is due to the fact that we do have a tailwind and the ball will come in a little bit hotter than what we do go in crosswind or headwind. 20% elevation and then true club distance number. And unfortunately here, we have the ball to miss on the right hand side, but that could definitely be explained based on the 12 of one pull angle that I had there on my pull. And uh, so try to avoid that and try to have a straight pull. And this with a safe option here on hole eight will definitely be a good chance. But me personally, I love a blast. I love a good blast, especially tailwind of this hole. I do believe the loss is definitely the best way to go with it. So let's take a look at that one. For option number two, we're gonna blast this ball to green, or at least that's the idea with it. So we need to have six bars of topspin here, and we want and need to play with a power five ball. So we're gonna use a berserker ball to try to boost up the wind a little bit. I would say a wind zero ball, such as a snow globe or something like that, wouldn't be bad either. So six topspin, ball guy line, you can see pointing left of flag, but also left of the right side rough. Adjustment is going to be max plus 10. Once that is done, we obviously need to push up to max here because we do need to gain as much distance possible here with the overpower. Center the ball and go full blast overpower. And I would say try to hit perfect or a great left. A perfect ball here could clip the rough with the second bounce if you are unlucky. That's mainly because you are, if so, um, you know, aiming too far to the right, but in most of the cases, the ball would end up approximately here. Obviously, those of you that do play in mass, sorry, in expert, will have a higher wind with a uh, with a berserker, which obviously will make the ball carry a little bit further, which will help for the second shot. Now, second shot is going to be a wedge. Here, you can see that I'm using max top spin. However, I would recommend to play this one EB school wise if you know that method, which is 20% EB school from with a wedge but it is with no spin obviously if you don't feel comfortable with that the best way is to go with max top spin and try to align the ball guideline with the wind try to minimize the flight time and have you know a less adjusted wedge to shoot in this case i'm a little bit lucky getting this ball right the pin for a beautiful eagle here with send it so again two options here on hole number eight uh, both of them with tailwind as a wind angle The drive on hold number 9 is going to be very difficult if you don't have an Apocalypse level 3 or better. Or I would say if you don't have a The Rock level 9 or level 8 or the Apocalypse level 3 or better. Because we do need a lot of curl here. And that's uh, unfortunately going to make those of you with lower level clubs have a big problem here. Because we can play down to the left hand side, sure. But then you're going to pitch yourself just up to the green to take an easy eagle. But we do want to give ourselves a shot for the albatross here. And then the right side is the only way of doing so. But it is a tough fairway because we do need to put the ball up as far right possible. Because as you can see that the fairway slopes massively down to the left. So if we are too far to the left, we're going to go into the rough and that's going to be a massive problem. So I'm using 5.8 bars of top spin, 3 right spin, and I'm using all the curl that I possible can to the right hand side. Or like to the right. Second shot is either going to be with a sniper or it's going to be with a goliath. In this case, I'm going to play with a goliath. And the reason I'm using the goliath is to make sure that if we are close to min club, uh, we're going to have top spin enough to get the ball to pin. And that's the same also to say that those of you playing with a lower level B52 won't have the top spin enough to do this shot. Those of you playing with even a higher level Grizzly won't have the possibility to have the top spin enough to get the ball to pin. So we need to think about that. And that's why Goliath, unfortunately, is going to be our best option here, in my opinion. True club distance, 25% elevation. You can see how much downhill it is here now. And even though the rough bump may look scary, we do have a lot of room for error. So even great balls will be fine. But if you can just remember the 25% elevation, then you will be fine regardless if you are a little bit off with your adjustment as well, as the elevation is the key to get yourself into the ballpark of uh, getting close to, uh, close to pain. And if you're lucky, you might get yourself an albatross. 
Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division with various wind here for the Valley of the Dead tournament uh, in Golf Clash the game. Make sure to get the ultimate tournament guides for Pro and our Expert and our Master by going to patreon.com slash golfclash to me. Link to Patreon and our guides is directly in the description down below. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. Thank you once again for watching and good luck in your Golf Clash game.